Yes, folks, you laughed with him when he played the Marine in the movie Wake Island, and soon you'll see him in two years before the mask. He's Hollywood's magnificent mug. Well, I may not have looks, but I got brains. Why, I got brains in my head that I never even used yet. <laughs> the American Meat Institute presents William Bendix in The Life of Riley. The meat people of America, providing a great food for a great nation. Three years ago this week, Pearl Harbor. Three years ago this week, the meat industry was called on to rush more than a million pounds of meat to San Francisco docks to replace supplies destroyed by the Japs. It was on its way in eight hours. That was meat's declaration of war, America, and meat has been in the fight ever since. And now, on behalf of all those engaged in supplying meat to the nation, the American Meat Institute presents The Life of Riley. Well, it's lunchtime at the Los Angeles aircraft plant where Chester A. Riley employs his talents as a riveter. At the moment, Riley's own private debating club is in session, the members being Riley and his co-worker, Jim Gillis. And the topic for today is their usual one, the respective virtues of their sons. Say that again, Gillis. Okay, but I already said it four times. My boy, Egbert, is the most popular boy in the John J. Boscowitz Junior High School. Uh, it's wonderful what fathers will do for their children. They'll even commit perjury. <laughs> Listen, Riley, are you insinuating that I am distorting the facts? Oh, I wouldn't go that far, Gillis. You're, you're just allergic to telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, once and for all, how can your boy be the most popular boy in the John J. Boscowitz Junior High School when my boy also goes to that school? Quit. What do you mean, quit? Well, that's a geometry term. Q-E-D. Quit. <laughs> Means I just proved you're wrong. I ain't talking geometry. I'm talking my boy, Egbert. Listen, what makes you so sure your Egbert is the most popular? What makes you so sure your junior is the most popular? Don't change the subject. <laughs> I asked you a question. Okay, I'll answer. All right. In the first place, you got to admit that my Egbert is good looking. <laughs> Honest, Gillis, your boy ain't good looking. You're just used to him. <laughs> I ain't used to him. He's good-looking. Well, if your Egbert is good-looking, it's thanks to my junior. He straightened out his teeth for him. <laughs> now, don't get sore, Riley. This is just a friendly discussion. He's certainly better-looking than your kid. Gillis, you're just pretty juiced. <laughs> How can you say Egbert is prettier than Junior when Junior inherited his looks from a very handsome man? Oh, I thought you were his father. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, very funny, very funny. Okay, I'll give you a break, Riley. We'll call it a tie. After all, in boys' looks ain't everything. My egg bite is also smart as a whip. Well, maybe he is, but I never met a whip that did anything clever. My junior is smarter than a whip. And my egg bite ain't only popular with the pupils. Once he even had tea at the principal's house. Well, my boy doesn't drink. <laughs> Only milk. You're going to be stubborn, huh, Riley? Uh, okay. Now I'll prove to you egg bites the most popular. Go ahead. I'm listening with a closed mind. <laughs> but remember, when it comes to popularity, my boy Junior was just re-elected president of his club for a fourth term. <laughs> well, maybe so, but hear me out. You uh, heard about the pre-Christmas dance the school has given? Yeah, only this year they're having it before Christmas. My junior's going. Well, so's my egg boy. Now, uh, tell me, Riley, uh, ever hear of a little girl in the eighth grade by the name of Marilyn Morris? Well, sure. My junior's got a big crush on her. Ah. She's very popular, huh? Mm -hmm. And all the boys is dying to take her to the dance, huh? That's right. So it figures the boy she goes with must be the most popular. You agree? Well, sure. Now, I got you. 
I'll bet you Marilyn will go with my egg bite to the dance. She will not. I'll bet you she'll go with my junior. <laughs> we'll see. Hello, Junior. Hello, Pop. Oh, I see you're playing with your chemistry set, huh? Well, I'm not playing, Pop. I'm making an experiment. Well, watch out you don't stain the wallpaper. When we rented this house, the landlady took inventory and counted all the spots on the wall. <laughs> uh, what are you trying to do, anyway? Well, I'm trying to combine the sodium in this test tube with the chlorine in this retort to make NaCl. So, what kind of an education are you getting? <laughs> Since when does NaCl spell salt? <laughs> that spells knuckle. <laughs> NaCl is a chemical symbol for salt, sodium chloride. Oh, Junior, salt is okay, but, but but haven't you got something important to do, like like making an important phone call? I don't have to make any phone calls. Well, oh well, then you've already asked her to go to your school dance. Ask who? Well, this swell girl, this Marilyn Morris. Hmm. She wouldn't go with me. How do you know she won't? Well, gee, Pop, she's the most popular girl in school, and... Well, I better go with Babs. Babs? Who's this girl, Babs? What kind of a girl is she? Babs, my sister. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, You will not take your sister... I refuse to allow any fellow with as little nerve as you got to take out my daughter. <laughs> oh, gee, you think I want to take my own sister to the dance? I, I'd rather take Marilyn, but... Every time I get to the phone to call her, I get a funny feeling. Like butterflies in my stomach. Oh, so that's it. You got an interior complex. <laughs> Sit down, Junior. I think I can help you. Yeah. Son, every boy has got to face certain dangerous things in his life. First, you had measles, then you had chicken pox, then you had the mumps, and now it's time for girls. <laughs> What's your phone number? Evergreen 4321. But, Pop, I like girls, but. But, oh, when I have to talk to them, I get scared. Weren't you ever scared like that, Pop? <laughs> no, not about phoning them. The only time I was ever scared of a girl was when I proposed to your mother. Right in the middle of the proposal, I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> oh, what did Mom do? She prompted me. <laughs> Junior, it's silly for a guy to be scared of a girl of the opposite sex. Now, now go on. Go, go, go phone this Marilyn. Go ahead. No... I can't, Pop. Not now. Now, listen, Junior. You hello, don't... Dad. Oh, hello, Babs. Listen, will you tell this brother of yours not to be afraid of phoning up Marilyn and asking her to the dance? Oh, I have been telling him, but it's no use. He's scared silly. Oh, cut it out. Go on, Junior. Phone. There's nothing to be scared of. I'll tell you exactly what to say. When Marilyn answers, the first thing you say is, hello. That is <laughs> kind of break the ice. <laughs> then you say, listen, Marilyn... I'm taking you to the dance, and I won't take no for an answer. Oh, no, Dad. You must never say that to a girl. (laughs) Please, Beth, don't tell me what to say to a girl. (laughs) Remember, I've taken out more girls than you have. (laughs) Well, all right, if you want to ruin everything. Now, you you, you listen to me, Junior. First you'll say no, and then you say, okay, if that's the way you feel about it, there's a million girls I could take. And I think I'll take them. <laughs> and then watch her snap up your offer. Oh, no, she won't, Pop. I know she won't. Junior's right. If a fellow ever spoke to me like that, I'd hang up on him. You will not hang up on him. You'll accept his offer. You'll go to the dance with this. But, Dad, no one is phoning me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, listen, Junior, stop stalling. Take the bulldog by the horns and phone Marilyn. No, I'm not phoning. I don't want to go to the old dance. I just want to be left alone. Well, what brought that up? Riley, what's the matter with Junior? 
ran out of the house? Oh, and... Mother, Dad's been trying to get him to phone Marilyn Morris and ask her to go with him to the school dance. Oh, Riley, will you let Junior take care of his own business? Oh, but, Peg, the boy needs help. I'm, I'm only trying to build up his subconfidence. <laughs> He's got to take Marilyn to the dance. What if he doesn't? He'll get along. No, I, I won't. That Gillis will jump... Gillis! Oh, so that's it. Oh, Dad, you're always arguing with Mr. Gillis about how wonderful Junior is. Well, what else can a father argue about? The election's over. <laughs> Baseball don't start until spring. Well, I'll show that, Gillis. Hand me that phone, Babs. Riley, what are you up to? Well, if Junior won't phone Marilyn, I will. Oh, See, Evergreen... Four, but, Dad, three, you can't two. do that. Now, stop worrying. Riley, put that phone down. Every time you button to Junior's business, you get him into trouble. Now... Hello? Uh, hello. Uh, I mean, uh... Hello? <laughs> uh, please, could I speak to Marilyn, please? This is Marilyn. Who's speaking? Uh, you don't know me, but... I'm a friend of Junior Riley. Oh, Riley, stop this nonsense. Who was that? Oh, that was my wife. I, I mean... <laughs> I mean my mother. That was my mother. Oh, so you're a friend of Junior Riley. Oh, sure. You know Junior, captain of the football team, star first baseman and high scoring forward of the basketball team. If that's what you phoned to tell me, I find it all very boring. Goodbye. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, Junior asked me to call you because he's got a sore throat. Junior wants you to go with him to the dance, and he won't take no for an answer. Oh, he won't, won't he? No, and if he wants to, he can take a million other girls. Well, let him. But, 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 but... I'm not interested in any man who has to get some child to do his phoning for him. Goodbye. We were cut off. You mean she hung up? I told you that line of yours wouldn't work. That's funny. It worked with you, Peg. <laughs> yeah. But hearing it again, I don't know how it did. Now, Dumplin', now. Pop, where are you? Oh, there's Junior now. You better tell him what you've done. Now, 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 now wait, Peg. Stay here. Remember, you own 50% of Junior. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to have anything to do with it. Uh, Babs, honey. No, thank you, Dad. Not me. I'm not getting into this. This is the thanks I get for trying to be a father. <laughs> Our pop. Uh, listen, Junior. I... Pop, I've been thinking things over, and I'm going to take your advice. I'm phoning Marilyn right away. Oh, God, 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 God. <laughs> Don't be hasty, Junior. You... No, you were right, Pop. There's no sense in putting it off. I, I got to do it sooner or later. Well, I gave you a choice, so do it later, huh? Please. Uh, well, it's silly to be scared of girls. I'll show you I got nerves. No, no, Junior, don't phone. H hang up, Junior. But, Pop, you were just trying to get me to... Hello? Oh, um, hello, Marilyn. Uh, this is Junior Riley. Junior Riley. Well, you've certainly got your nerve calling me. You ought to be ashamed getting your idiotic friend to phone me. What, Marilyn? I'll never speak to you again as long as I live. But, Marilyn. Hello? Marilyn? Marilyn? Bob, she hung up. She said something about an idiotic friend of mine that phoned her. <laughs> <laughs> Pop, what's the matter? Your face is getting red all over. Uh, it, it must be my tight shoes. <laughs> Pop, uh, you, you phoned her? Junior, I didn't mean any harm. I, I was trying to help you, and it, it, it ain't as bad as you think. But look, 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 let's forget about it. You, you go to the movies. Wait a minute. Here's a quarter, Junior. Oh, Pop. Junior, J Junior, come back here, will you? Uh, believe me, there's a lot more important things in life than girls, and if you'll give me a little time, I'll think of one. <laughs> Well, Riley certainly has messed up his son's social life, at least temporarily, and there will be further developments in just a moment. Right now, this is Ken Niles speaking for the American Meat Institute. It was just 156 weeks ago today that the most shocking news of a lifetime started crackling out of our radios. Pearl Harbor. You know that our nation was immediately galvanized into action. You know that the miracle of American production is why we are on the winning side of the war today. Now, what happened to the meat industry at the time of Pearl Harbor? Well, at 9.30 Monday morning, after the Japs had hit and run, 
The Chicago Quartermaster Depot received an order to purchase one million pounds of meat, boned, frozen, and boxed for immediate shipment to replenish supplies. Contact was made at once for the meat packing companies. By five o'clock the same day, cars loaded with a million pounds of meat were rolling toward San Francisco. Since that time, meat has been mobilized for war. Better than 10 billion pounds of meat have rolled to American ports and camps of war. More than 7 billion pounds to our fighting allies, over and above supplies for the folks at home. Why do our fighters need meat to fight on? Why does our home front need meat to work on? Because meat provides essential bodybuilding proteins. In fact, meat is called a yardstick of protein foods because meat measures up to every protein need. And now back to the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Well, Riley's put his foot in it again. His attempt to get a date for his son, Junior, for the school dance by phoning Marilyn Morris and pretending to be a friend of Junior's ended in disaster. Now Marilyn won't speak to Junior, and Junior won't speak to his father. My own son, and he won't even talk to me. It's your own fault. I even offered to mow the lawn for him. (laughs) He didn't say a word. Well... You'll get over it in a day or two. Now, stop worrying. And if your friend Gillis teases oh, you for... I ain't worried about Gillis. It's what I've done to Junior. Well, next time, don't butt in. Uh, well, we've got to go and hang out the wall. I'm going to stay flat on this couch and turn this over on my head. Who's that? It's me. It's the Odell. Oh, the door's open. Huh. It ain't my favorite undertaker. How are you, Digger? Excellent, Riley. And you're looking fine. Very natural. <laughs> Wait, Digger, let me hang up your coat. Oh, don't bother getting up, Riley. Just lie there on the couch. I don't mind. I, uh, think I'd rather sit up. <laughs> you seem depressed, Riley, so I think I'll cheer you up. Have you heard the latest one? First man. It's a bad day for the race. Second man. What race? First man, the human race. (laughs) Isn't that a scream? Yeah, I think I'll lie down again. What's wrong, Riley? I can see something is troubling you. Well, yeah, something is. Riley, you can trust me. I won't tell it to a living soul. Well, Digger, it's all on account of a dance. Oh, a dance. Yeah. The art of Tupsicare. I adore dancing. It's so gay. <laughs> well, this one ain't going to be for Junior. You see, he was afraid to ask a certain girl to his dance, and so I phoned her and made out I was a boyfriend of his, and, well, I spoiled everything. It isn't hopeless, Riley. If I were Junior, I'd dig up another girl. <laughs> now, you could do that, Digger. <laughs> but Junior wants to go with this particular marrow. I sympathize with the lad. When I was a boy, somehow I could never get a girl to go to parties with me. I don't know why. I was just as much fun then as I am now. <laughs> uh... I don't know. I wish there was some way to square things for Junior before he disowns me as his father. There is, Riley. Go to this girl and confess everything. (laughs) Then she'll forgive Junior. Yeah. That's what I'll do. I'll go and confess. I'm glad I thought of that. Would you like me to... (laughs) Would you like me to drive you there? There's plenty of room in my car. No, thanks, Digger. I'll see it through alone. This is my funeral. Oops, that reminds me. I have an appointment. <laughs> well, cheerio, bury me not on the lone prairie. Yes? Uh, pardon me. Does Marilyn Morris live here? She does. I'm her father. Well... Could I see her, please, sir? What is it about? Well, I, I want to find out if she still hasn't got a date for the school dance. 
Indeed. Aren't you a little too old for that sort of thing? Oh, no, no. I don't want to take her to the dance. My wife wouldn't like it. I, I, I mean, I mean, my son wouldn't. I, I mean, I, I, I just oh, want Father, to tell her something. Ra- oh, oh, pardon me. I didn't know you had company. I haven't. You have, Marilyn. Oh? Uh, I'm Mr. Riley. Junior is my father. I, I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I'm his son. I, I mean, I, 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 I'm pleased to meet you, Marilyn. Have a cigar. No, no, no. I mean, I mean I, uh, you, Morris, I, uh, uh, Mr. Morris. I don't smoke. Uh, you wanted to see me, Mr. Riley? Well, yeah, I wanted to talk to you uh, private-like. <clears throat> I uh, figured if you were alone. <clears throat> There's something I gotta tell you just between the two of us. <coughs> you can cough your head off, Mr. Riley, but I insist on being present during any conversation you have with my daughter. Oh, well, well, uh, well, well Marilyn, yesterday you, you got a phone call from somebody who said he was a friend of Junior? Yes, and of all the silly little dopes I ever heard, he certainly takes the cake. My Junior is no dope. I mean his friend who phoned. Oh, oh, well, well, don't you think you're being a little hard on Junior's friend? She is not. I happen to overhear that conversation on the extension in my study. Father! And I must say, Mr. Riley, if the boy who telephoned is the type your son associates with, I forbid Marilyn to have anything to do with him. (laughs) Now, listen, now, the boy who phoned is a very fine tripe. He's a drip. I wish you, I knew who it was. Well, I... that, that's what I come to tell you. You know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the drip. You? <laughs> Yesterday, I wouldn't have believed it. Today, I do. Well, you, you see, Junior was dying to ask you to the dance, but... He was too scared to phone you, and so that's why I did. He he didn't know anything about it. Oh, I see. Oh, I wish I'd known. I wouldn't have spoken to Junior the way I did. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, then you ain't sorry, Junior? Of course not. You forgive him, huh? Certainly. Oh, well, okay, then it's all settled. Junior will call for you, 8 o'clock, Saturday night. Oh, no, no, I can't go with him to uh, the dance. I'd like to, but I can't. Oh, why not? I've already accepted a date with Egbert Gillis. You... Hmm. What a wonderful pal I turned out to be For Egbert Gillis Well, we're off to the movies, Riley Now, have a good time, Dumplin' Come on, Dad, dear Junior, are you sure you don't want to go to the dance tonight? I'd be glad to go with you No, I don't want to go to the dance Now, you just leave Junior alone He'll be okay with me Go on, go ahead, go on, go on. All right, then yeah. Good night Good night Oh, cheer up, Junior. Tonight us men are going to make a night of it, huh? How's about starting off with the, with the snappy game of checkers, huh? I'll... I don't feel like checkers. Well, then, how's about showing me how you make salt on your chemistry set? No, I just want to sit here and think. About what? Oh, about life and how mixed up it gets. Junior, you've got to learn to smile. Listen... I heard a great joke today. Listen. First man, ain't this a bad day for the game? Second man, what game? Third man, the human game. (laughs) (laughs) Ain't that funny, Junior? (laughs) Yeah, Pop, it's hilarious. I told you I'd cheer you up. Now let's go in. Oh, I'll get it, Junior. Oh, it's you, Gillis. Good evening, Riley. Oh, take it easy, Riley. Don't close the door on my foot. Oh, I'm very sorry. Come on in, Egbert. Hello, Mr. Riley. Hello, Junior. Hello, Egbert. I know why you're here, Gillis. All right, go on. Go ahead. Glow. Oh, on. no, Riley. I wouldn't come for that. Uh, we just happened to pass by on our way to pick up Marilyn, so uh, I figured maybe I could give Junior a lift to the dance. Oh, well, that's very thoughtful of you, Gillis, to go four miles out of your way and use up a half a gallon of General Eisenhower's gas. But it so happens Junior ain't going to the dance. Him and me are sitting this one out. You don't, sir? Yeah. Oh, well, don't take it too hard, Junior. Some kids are cut out for social life and some ain't. It ain't that. Junior's got more important things to do than go dancing. He's staying home tonight to 
to, 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 to work out some chemistry experiments. He's, he, he's going to make salt. What for? You can get a whole pound for a dime. <laughs> he's inventing it with his chemistry set. So, that's baby stuff. Sure. My egg white makes iodine with his chemistry set. Made a whole bottle of iodine last night. Ah, well, he should have pasted a picture of your face on a bottle. <laughs> How could you make iodine, Egbert? We don't learn that till a senior year. I did so make it, didn't I, Father? Yes, sir. The finest iodine I ever saw. How do you know? Did you taste it? You don't believe us, huh? No. Where's your chemistry set, Junior? In the other room. Okay, come on, Egbert. Oh, but, Father, I'll be late for the day. No, no, you won't. You'll see, Riley. Whether it's social stuff or chemistry, my Egbert is a great little mixer. <laughs> Wait, uh, when do we get the iodine? In a minute, Father. Just as soon as I heat this test tube. Egbert, I think you made a mistake. You should have... I know it. what I'm doing, Junior. Sure, Egbert knows what he's doing. Junior, don't interfere with Monsieur Egbert Pasteur. Come on, Egbert, we're waiting. Come on. All I've got to do is hold this flame under the test tube. Just... No, no! Egbert! Egbert! Oh, I'm all right, Father. I'm not hurt. I guess I made a mistake. Egbert, where are your eyebrows? <laughs> Holy smoke, his eyes are bald. <laughs> Where's the mirror? Where's the mirror, Papa? Oh, here, look. My eyebrows. Oh, don't cry, Egbert. I haven't got any eyebrows. Now, look, Egbert, now, now, don't take it so hard now. So you won't grow up to be a John L. Lewis. What? <laughs> Junior, get dressed in your best suit. Dress? Yeah, if I know women inside of 15 minutes, you're going to get a call from a certain young lady whose initials are Marilyn Morris. Bob, it's over 15 minutes and Marilyn hasn't phoned. Well, she'll phone. Just give her time. Remember, Junior, when she phones, play hard to get now. Now, now, now keep cool. Don't be nervous. I'll, I'll take you to her house in a taxi. Now, let's get ready. We better get... Well, where's my hat? On your head. Well, never mind. I'll look for it later. Huh? <laughs> now, 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 be calm. Now, relax, Junior. Oh, that, that's her. I told you. She's, I'll, I, I'll answer first. But, Bob, you, you listen in. Uh, hello? Oh, Mr. Riley, this is Marilyn Morris. May I speak to Junior, please? Well, he's kind of tied up now. No, Pop, no. It's very important. It's about the dance. I'd like him to take me. Well, if he can tear himself away from the girls. Girls? Oh, yeah, the house is full of them. Always after Junior. Well, in that Give me the phone, no. Pop. Hello, Marilyn, this is Junior. I'll be glad to take you to dance. I'll call for you in five minutes of taxi. Goodbye. She's gone with me. She's gone with me. Well, sure, just like I told you, Junior. It always works. Play hard to get. Here's a special message from our star, Riley himself, William Bendix. Folks, all over the world, millions of American boys are carrying the flags of the United States and the United Nations ever forward to victory. That victory over our barbaric enemies is inevitable. We know that all too many brave young men will never return to share the fruits of peace we also know. If these men are willing to stake their lives on what they believe in, the least we, safe here at home, can do is to give them weapons they must have to fight with. We must buy war bonds, lots of them, more than we think we can afford. Each bond we buy is an investment in America's future and a tribute to those who are willing to die to protect that investment. Good night. Don't forget to live the life of Riley with us every week at this very same time. Next week, Riley goes to adult evening school and gets entangled with a love-starved female. We think you'll enjoy the results. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood saying good night. This is the Blue Network. 7.30 at KECA, Los Angeles.